Today, we're going to take a look at the very enticingly named cabbage soup diet. That's right. If you love cabbage and you kind of hate yourself, this is the diet for you. If you remember the Spice Girls, Bum Bags, and Saved by the Bell, there's a good chance you lived through the 90s. And just like any decade, the 90s had its fair share of diet trends, one of which we're going to look at today. How's it going, guys? My name's Richie Kerwin, and today we're going to talk all about a diet that became popular in the 90s, and which, luckily for us, didn't survive long after that decade. We'll talk about how it worked, what it claimed to do, and what was wrong with it. We'll also talk about what actually works for weight loss. As always, I wanna point out that I'm not recommending any particular diet in this video. In fact, I'm gonna be really blunt right now and tell you that I don't think you should follow any specific diet at all. You can follow sensible nutrition guidelines and eat well without putting a name on your diet. Now, with that said, let's get started. So believe it or not, and I actually find it really hard to believe or understand myself, this diet has been around for a long time and seems to get a little resurgence every now and then. One of its most recent resurgences was back in the 90s when it appeared in magazines like Cosmopolitan and Gentleman's Quarterly, now known as GQ. So it's really hard to say who actually invented the diet, although one of the most popular versions of it was written by Margaret Danbrot. The one thing I can guarantee you is that this diet was not created by a nutritionist. Amazingly, the diet was apparently formerly used at some very famous hospitals, like the Mayo Clinic. But I can't find any actual proof for that online, so take it with a pinch of salt. The big claim of the diet was that it could help you to lose 10 pounds. That's nearly five kilos in just seven days. So the whole diet was based around, surprisingly enough, cabbage soup, which you were supposed to make in a big batch at the start of the week, and you could have as much as you wanted, whenever you wanted. Now. In fairness to the diet, the soup wasn't just cabbage, water, and salt. It had some other ingredients like onions, green peppers, tomatoes, celery, even carrots, mushrooms, and vegetable stock. So it might have had a little bit of flavor. You were supposed to simmer it for anything from 45 minutes to two hours, depending on the recipe you find. Either way, you're getting some pretty mushy vegetables. But just before you start thinking you can only have cabbage soup on the diet, I can tell you that you would be wrong. It actually comes with a whole seven day diet plan, which looks a little something like this. Day one, cabbage soup and raw fruit, but not bananas. Why does everybody hate bananas? Day two, cabbage soup and raw or cooked vegetables, but not potatoes. So many potato haters out there. Day three, cabbage soup and raw fruit and vegetables, but not bananas or potatoes. Day four, cabbage soup, skim milk, and as many as eight bananas. I literally can't with this diet. Day five, cabbage soup, six tomatoes, and beef. Day six, cabbage soup, again. Unlimited beef and unlimited vegetables, excluding potatoes. And day seven, cabbage soup, brown rice, and sugar-free juice. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? According to an actual research review of fad diets, the cabbage soup diet provides a lot fewer than 1,000 calories a day for the first three days. About 1,000 or more calories on days four and seven, and a little over 1,200 calories on days five and six. This is a very low calorie diet. And if you're thinking that this diet is just too hard to stick to, ho oh, ho, don't worry. It actually discourages you from exercising, which makes everything better, right? Okay, let's talk about everything that's wrong with this diet. First off, it's a diet that sells itself on helping you to lose 10 pounds in a week. There seems to be a serious problem with many people who are trying to lose weight in the modern world in that most of them want to lose all that weight straight away. Rapid weight loss seems to be everybody's goal. But as someone who has both lost a considerable amount of weight myself, and someone who has worked with a lot of people to help them lose weight, let me tell you that slow and steady weight loss approaches are probably going to be a lot more effective in the long term. Slower weight loss gives people the opportunity to build the habits that they need for long-term weight maintenance. Slower weight loss also doesn't restrict people so much that they get to a point where they can't stand their diet anymore and go on an epic binge, which only ends in them feeling worse about themselves. Even if the diet does promise to help someone lose 10 pounds in a week, I can guarantee you that it is not 10 pounds of fat. A lot of that weight is going to be water weight that people lose because this is basically a very low carbohydrate diet which will mean people will lose glycogen or carbohydrates from their muscles. And when we lose glycogen, we also lose water. There's also a really good chance that people are losing a little bit of muscle mass in that time too. Especially considering that exercise 
is discouraged on this diet. If you're new to exercise and nutrition, one of the most important things you can do to maintain muscle mass while you're dieting is to do some form of resistance exercise. While I'm all for increasing people's consumption of vegetables, and some of the vegetables that I have mentioned here are really, really fantastic sources of fiber, vitamins, minerals, and polyphenols, this is by no means a sustainable diet. There's no protein, no fat, and the calories are very, very low because most vegetables, especially cabbage, are incredibly low in total calories. On top of all that, all the liquid from the soup and fiber from the vegetables would potentially help to ward hunger off for a few days, making the diet a little more tolerable. That said, I understand that this is not supposed to be a long-term sustainable diet, especially considering it has seven days written in its tagline. Unfortunately, this is just another example of a hyper-restrictive diet that will inevitably end in somebody having a really crappy relationship with food and potentially with vegetables too. I think the massive focus on extreme diets and quick fixes is one of the biggest flaws of the diet industry. Unfortunately, people want everything now and diets that promise quick results often sell well. And as if you needed any further reason to not do this diet, one of the commonly noted side effects is flatulence. Mmm, cabbage. So I hope you found this interesting. And if you've ever tried the cabbage soup diet, or if there are any other diets that you'd like me to review, let me know in the comments below. And remember, like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.